this is Bob, one of the chaos chosen. Today, I will show you how I paint this little guy into one of my favorite legions in 40k, the Emperor's Children. Bob is someone I picked up when I went to my local hobby store and I saw him in a display case. You see, in my hobby store, you can find models individually that you can just buy. Some of them are already pre-primed, some of them are not primed. And when I saw this guy, I knew I had to get him because I already had some ideas how I wanted to paint him. You emperor of a fool, you gotta lay your hands on me. If you do, I will destroy you using my full might and bring chaos on your whoa, world. Whoa, 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 Bob. Calm down, calm down. Just, I'm just here to paint you, that's all. Go away. Fine, I will leave. But not because you told me. Oops, that's embarrassing. I'm sorry, you saw that. Welcome back, Bob. I see you are ready to be primed. Then, let's get some priming. There we go, looking quite nice there. I started off with a slight green base since it's a color I feel the pur will make the purple stand out a little bit more. What? Oh no, I want to stay my previous color, black, like my soul. Okay, okay, just calm down. Now, to start off things, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to be painting Bob. I will start with the purple first since it's the lowest part and that way when I work on the highest, I will hopefully make less mistakes. Unhand me, or I will torture you in hand. No, no, Bob. Where are your manners? I'm going to be talking badly. I'm only here to help you align yourself with a Chaos Legion. That is all. My name is not Bob. Stop calling me Bob, or I, and I talk to you as I want to talk to you. Okay, okay. Well, moving on. What I will be using to paint Bob here is the skull color artist range, or what I like to call the fancy stuff. Oh, that is fancy. I feel the chaos favor slanish cursing through my veins. Oh yes. Oh yes. The good stuff. With those paints, I let you paint me like one of your French girls. You can call me Bob if you if you like. Slanish Wilson. Um okay. I'll stop calling you Bob. That just got a little bit weird, little guy. I'll go back to calling you Chaos Chosen. But before we start, I will be removing his power back so I can paint this that separately. And I have more free access to the back area. And in theory, it should be helping me get those little nook and crannies a little bit easier. So like I said, I'm gonna start off with laying out that dark violet color on the skull color artist range. Now the thing about these paints is that they're highly pigmented, so they're very thick and you have to water in them, them down a little bit more than usual. And honestly, if you ever get these, just put a tiny bit of it in your wet palette because if not, if you put like your usual thing that you're going to need, that's going to be way too much. So I recommend you put just a slightly bit. And like I said, I'm only going to start off with the purple everything that is at the very bottom because like I said is afterwards the higher areas I should be making less mistakes and if I need to fix them it's gonna be pretty much easier to fix the recess than the highest areas and this is how it looked like after just one coat like I said these are very highly pigmented the paints and the coverage is great this dark purple looks very vibrant it's very lively and honestly I really love it. Yeah, I'm still getting used to these paints, but honestly, with just time and practice, I am pretty sure I can master this. But honestly, this came out pretty great with just one coat. And afterwards, I'm just gonna be adding some details to it. Now I'm going to be just doing some layering with my violet color, same range. So I'm just gonna go as typical layering goes. You're just gonna go for a brighter and brighter color. And I'm going to be sticking to that violet looking color. Eventually, I'm going to be adding some pastel colors. But for now, I wanted to just get the base done. And for my type of layering, what I do is I tend to add a little bit of uh, glazing medium from Vallejo. But I'm not sure how that's going to turn out with this uh, highly pigmented colors. This is my first time trying out. So that's going to be quite of a learning experience. So I'll just be adding some glazing medium so I can thin down the paints more and I'm able to layer them more smoothly and just have less brush marks because I noticed that 
for my first layer since it, it is a very highly pigmented uh, paint it does leave brush marks so i'm trying to get the hang of it and trying to leave those brush marks less and less but for now it's coming out pretty great i'm really liking how it's turning out i'm doing a lot of layering i added my pastel colors so i can make that high high highlights and doing some edge highlighting as i'm doing it so it's coming out pretty great honestly uh, i found myself having a lot more control with these paints than my usual ones which i should use way i hope since this is my first time and if you were to try it for the first time as well it would be a very high learning curve having to learn the right ratios for glazing medium to high pigmented paint and just trying to figure it out all this little experiment that i'm doing but honestly it's just coming out great i'm really in love with these paints plus the colors are turning out so vivid so nice it's quite of a nice change of pace to what i'm used to with my vallejo colors that are already pre-mixed colors here I'm having to figure out how to mix them since there's only 48 colors in the entire range. But in the end, after being done with my highlights and everything, it came out amazing. It has a nice punchy color and it's pretty vibrant, but I'm gonna go and tone it down a little bit later. But for now, it's nice and punchy and I'm really liking it. Next up, I'll be moving to the higher raised areas and I'm going to be using the Persian Blue. And I'm using this because it's gonna, it's dark enough to act like as a black but it's not really a black it's kind of like if you ever used the contrast paint of leviathan blue it's somewhat in between that and a little bit brighter since like i said these colors are very very vibrant so it's gonna look very nice and once i add my highlights to it it's gonna pop up a little bit more but that is what i'm starting off with right now and we'll see how this is gonna look like in the end with us with that blue the Prussian blue and that violet color that I did before. Now I painted the rest off camera because it was kind of a hassle to get those nooks and crannies. I had to put my hand on top of the camera all the time so I had to do it off camera. Could not find just a good angle but it came out like this and it's coming out pretty great. Now I'm just adding some of my highlights to this blue and like I said since these colors are very punchy now it's just looking more and more brighter. But in the end, I'm just going to go with my usual method of getting a black and glazing it to almost an ink kind of thing. I do not want to add an ink. I'd rather just get glazes so I can just tone down those colors. So that's going to be my end end project. But for now, I just wanted to add those highlights to all those trace areas where I think my light source should be hitting. Usually, I think of my light source being on the top. So it's just to add those highlights to the top just in this case i added some turquoise from skull color um the artist range as well to my prussian blue so i was just mixing those two colors and it was coming out pretty great and like i said i'm using the usual method using the glazing medium thinning them down just enough to get those smooth smooth layering um but it it is a learning curve when it comes to these paints and for now uh, as i was painting this it was quite a nice experience to actually learn to paint with new paints and something different as well once i was done applying all of my highlights to the blue it looked pretty good i was really happy with it now it's time to continue to the cloth and the bones now I'm going to show you what I usually do when I paint these kind of stuff. I usually start off with a brown, that way that can be my shadows. And once, I, like I always do, I glaze in on top of white, or enough white and then an actual white. Um, it kind of gives you more of a bony taste uh, texture when it comes to the bones. And for the cloth, I'm just going to stick to adding, glazing some of my off-white. For the skin colors, I'm still trying to figure that out, how to do it. But for now, I decided to why not apply the same technique for it. So what I did is I went through the entire models, cloth, bone, and that um, face that he has in the bottom. I'm picturing that it's going to be the 
face of someone that he extended it and put it on his uh, armor. So that is exactly what I'm going to be laying down. First, I'm going to start off with the brown. And I'm going to go off with a vanilla white that is from also us as well. I'm only going to be using uh, scale 75 artist uh, range colors. So I'll be doing the usual thing, just glazing lighter and lighter colors so I can get from that shadows to those highlighted areas so it should look pretty good in the end and as i keep adding more and more the same color to the area it does get brighter and brighter for now i'm not adding my full white yet i'm just sticking to that vanilla white for now because uh, i want to be able to use that color that i put already on the white palette and just use it all before i add that full-on white color on top of the bones and i can also differentiate differentiate between the um, cloth and the bones after finishing with my cloth i decided to finally lay down that final area of white so i'm just going to be adding that uh, full-on white on top of the bone that way it can just look like more bony and as you can see it goes from like a very dark shaded area to a brighter area and hopefully that can be shown here in, in my camera but to me it looks pretty cool and I'm actually being able to differentiate between the color that I used here and the color that I used for the cloth. Now the face is going to be a little bit more of an experiment. I decided to add a little bit of orange to the off-white. That way I can get more of a skin tone kind of thing. After all my colors were all said and done, they were all dry. And this is how it looked like in the end. And I'm actually quite proud. I added some little bit scratches to his armor just to add a little bit more taste to it. And like I said, I'm just going to connect those dots and make it more darker right now because I see it a little bit too bright for my liking it's supposed to be some more green dark but I'm super happy with it for now and then one of the very few things that were left for me to do when it comes to the model itself was to just paint those tubings and the tongue like structure that he has on his face so what I did is I got my pastel violet and I added some white to it to make it a little bit more wider and that was going to be the tube area and for the fleshy looking thing inside, that little tube-like structure that it has inside that tube, I decided to paint it into a magenta color because I thought that was going to make it seem like it was some sort of flesh, kind of like an intestine kind of thing, you know, because it's like, for me, they're excess. So for him, I see him as bony, like he has a bunch of bones and stuff like that. And he is the guy chosen for me. He's going to be the excess of what he is meant to be because for me that is what slanish is and that's why i find it pretty cool the last thing i did was to paint his weapons and for these i just got my green gray color it is a very dark gray with a of course as the name calls it it, says it has a green tint to it but it seems more like a black color like a very green black color so i found it to be pretty cool and since in the end it was going to be vibrant i decided to use this but sadly when i was done painting just the base coat of it my camera died and i had to charge it so i did not record the rest of it but i'm just gonna go ahead and end this because that's the last thing i painted after this i put everything together i basted i made my own little base for it and it was pretty amazing for what i learned about scale colors artist range it takes time to master them um in this one mini i learned a lot of things about the way i paint the way other paints work honestly if you have the budget for it i know it's kind of expensive but they're really worth it i mean you should you should not get the whole range of it just specific colors for it because you can just mix and match it's kind of like the chimera colors but honestly i honestly recommend these colors when all said and done i added that the uh, glaze of black on top of my color of all of these colors so i can tone down that brightness because since they are heavy pigment and colors it comes out very bright very punchy like i said before but that's not what i was looking for for this uh, chaos chosen i was gonna go a little bit more dark for it so i decided to just add that famous glaze that i've been talking about of, of black glaze that i do and just to tone it down and of course i finished the weapon like i said and honestly these paints are amazing painting this model with them it was pretty cool i'll be doing more with these paints i'll be making more videos of how to paint the other stuff that i've done and um, hopefully y'all like it and i'm gonna go ahead and show you how the model turned out 
at the very end when it was all based, it looked like this. So closing thoughts, uh, these paints are pretty amazing, the model came out pretty great after everything is said and done, after all the details were put in place. I have an Instagram if you would like to go ahead and follow it. And if you like the way I did my little painting tutorial, go ahead and leave a comment below. Hopefully you get to subscribe, I'll be posting more videos like this, I also do the lore videos as you've seen on my YouTube channel. But hopefully you like this content and like I said go ahead and give it a thumbs up give it, give it a comment see what you guys thought about the range if you think that you might get it too expensive or if you're interested or just curious about it but honestly for me I highly recommend this paint for you and thanks for watching